one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 15 pages. Okay, this is all of the places in the state of Colorado where the state of Colorado has relinquished or ceded jurisdiction to the federal government. If the, Fed, if the Colorado, state of Colorado legislature has not ceded jurisdiction to the federal government, it doesn't have it. What are some of the places where it's been ceded? You'll recognize some of these places. All right. Okay, let's see here. Municipal law enforcement capacity? Yes, yes. The, With, within these jurisdictions, they have a municipal law enforcement authority. Mesa Verde National Park. Exclusive jurisdiction shall be, and the same as hereby ceded to the United States. Uh, Air Corps. Uh, Rocky Mountain National Park. Exclusive jurisdiction shall be, and the same as hereby ceded to the United States of America, over and within all the territory, now included in that track. Or so the rock. United States Army Garrison, Fitzsimmons and Aurora. Berkeley Air Force Base. All right, you gotta get in the picture here. All right, those are the places where Colorado has ceded exclusive legislative jurisdiction within the state. Um, Leadville Post Office, Pueblo Post Office, Colorado Springs Post Office, jurisdiction over Denver Mint, ceded. Okay, so there's a procedure, Denver, jurisdiction over Denver Public Building site seated. There's and what I'm what my point is is there's a procedure that a federal government can acquire municipal jurisdiction that it doesn't otherwise have, and it's very limited. The fact is that if this uh, is true, which it is, the federal government cannot come into this building and exercise its police power. If the BLM was to show up here. They would have no more authority than you and I or I would have in this building. None. And this is what we have to understand. Is the federal government is pretending to have authority and power that it doesn't have. It wants to scare us with FEMA. It wants to scare us with Homeland Security. Oh, we need them so bad. But the sheriff is the supreme law enforcement authority of the county. Now, here's, a, here's an example. Now, the third one down here is uh, concurrent legislative jurisdiction. All right, so right here in the Colorado statute, same title. Here's title, Article 3. The uh, United the Concurrent Legislation jur Jurisdiction is ceded to um, Curricante National Recreation Area. All right, so that Blue Mesa Reservoir, that's concurrent jurisdiction. What that means, and this is a weird thing, is we have two sovereign entities, the state of Colorado, and I, I won't say that the federal government is sovereign, I can't go there, but they have legislative jurisdiction over there. So we have two competing municipal powers operating over Kerr Conte. And there is, there is a struggle that right now the federal government is, is operating because the state of Colorado relinquished it. We should strongly object when the state of Colorado relinquishes any control or power. Black Canyon is the national uh, Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park, Bent's Old Fort National Historic Site, Colorado National Monument, Dinosaur National Monument, Fluorescent Fossil Beds, Great Sand Dunes, uh, Hovenwolf National Monument, Hucka House National, National Monument, and uh, Rocky Mountain Arsenal, uh, United States over Pinion Canyon, United States Air Force Academy. Oh, how's it? So the exclusion of everywhere else from this statute is evidence that the federal BLM, the Forest Service, has very limited jurisdiction and they have to be operating within these areas to have any at all. Have you had a question? Yeah, David, Kevin? You made a comment about committing treason. Um, if, if, like relinquishing some of this from a state standpoint. Can you explain that a little bit further? The, and, and if that's the case, what's the what's our duty? Let's go back. <laughs> Let me lay a foundation for treason. I believe the Federal Reserve Act is an act of treason against the American people. If we're going to chase something back to its origins, 
the, the fact that the Congress, which was given, which was delegated power to mint coins and regulate the value thereof, and um, when they relinquished that power to the Federal Reserve, that was an unlawful delegation granted power. And so that in itself uh, unleveled the playing field to the point where now we're living in Oz. We're living in, in a land of make-believe. Yeah. And, and as evidence of that $16 trillion deficit that has no basis in reality, using the minerals and the infrastructure of America to back that debt, uh, America, uh, the, the, the act of treason, the specific act of treason was when our trustees in the federal government adopted a law and, and are now subjecting the people to force of arms under threat of jail, a coercive threat to comply and capitulate, that's an act of treason against their own sovereign. So when we come down to this, I'm basically laying this foundation to show a chink in the armor where we can begin to push back from a very dangerous chink, a very weak link in their in their structure that they're working real hard to close. And so right now it's a, it's a race against time. Can, can they close that chink before we exploit it? So the act of treason by the state of Colorado is the state of Colorado had a duty to object and, and interpose in behalf of the people when the Federal Reserve Act was passed and they didn't. They had a duty to interpose and, and uh, nullify in 1933 when Roosevelt took us off the gold standard. They, there was many opportunities in the history of this country where the governments acted in collusion in, in, an inter, in, a, in a racketeering enterprise against the people. That duty has no expiration date. The duty had, I, totally. So uh, that we're just now waking up to our responsibility and duty and just to have this conversation, like I said, this is a revolutionary act, just having the conversation. But the conversation needs to be had. And we need to have this conversation courageously because it really is an act of treason against the sovereign, which is the people. I, I, it's my position that you can't commit an act of treason against this government. I, I think what, he, what Tyler was alluding to earlier was the fact that like just even this year, Steve King passed there, they passed a SB 13, I think it was, and 13 or 13. Yeah, 13 or three, and uh, gave uh, Secret Service police, state police powers in Colorado. Without that yeah, whole yeah. certification, like I had to go through. Yeah, without any certification. Without any certification, I, they just automatically become peace officers once they step foot on our soil. Yes, right. That's exactly what the bill says. Yeah, I, I, that's an Orwellian. That's draconian. It's, it's a draconian bill. It, you know, it's, it's establishing the Gestapo. We're, mo we're moving toward total government, and, and every step toward that is, a, is another abuse or usurpation. Again, pursuing it very much the same object. You said challenge it. It's unchallengeable, or is it challengeable? It's, That's what I'm looking for. It's, 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 it's absolutely challengeable. Um, the, the, there's a principle in law called standing. Um, standing is, is when, um, what's the best way? If you're a member of a homeowner's association, you have standing within that homeowner's association to speak to the organizational concepts of, of that homeowner's association. As an American, you have standing to vote, you know, you have standing to participate in government. Um, you have standing to challenge law if that law works against you. If, if somehow that law can deprive you of life, liberty, or property uh, unequally with everybody else, then, then you, you stand out as a, a special case that has standing to challenge the law. If I go and open a road because the Forest Service closed it illegally and they arrest me, I have standing to sue them. And that, and that gives me actually standing to go after things like the uh, FLIPMA the National Forest or the Federal Land Man Management Policy Act. It, it gives me standing to challenge the federal government's jurisdiction in the state of Colorado. So you see a little act of civil disobedience, which isn't really civil disobedience at all, it's just a little, uh, relatively speaking, appears to be an act of rebellion, but it opens up a door of standing that you can challenge the entire beast, the entire, the entire system. So uh, the answer to the question, you know, about, about Secret Service. 
if you commit an act and Secret Service begins to exercise its power, now you can go and reverse and sue them or bring up a counterclaim against the Secret Service and argue that that particular law is unconstitutional. Another remedy would be a referendum by the people. The people could put that on the ballot and challenge that law as um, a violation of the Tenth Amendment because it's, it's a power, that power is reserved to, to, this, to the state of Colorado. And here's the state of Colorado just gave that to the federal government and brought that elephant's nose under the tent. So there are means to that end. The, the real hard part is finding a lawyer with the courage to take it off, or a politician with the with enough political capital that he doesn't mind wasting on an on an idea and investing in an idea that might actually work. Brandon. So we, I mean, we all you know, agree with you as far as you know where the jurisdiction lies. But when you're dealing with the BLM or the Forest Service, they all they use FLIPMA. You know, they use like, hey, here's our excuses, FLIPMA, and then they got two executive orders from what Carter and Ford that they lean on that, hey, no, we have the authority based on FLIPMA and these executive orders to close these routes. So that's where you say that the only way you're going to clear the path is by getting rid of FLIPMA. FLIPMA right? is in the way. <laughs> but the trump card on FLIPMA is the Colorado Enabling Act. And so, and this is why I went down this road. You know, if we're, if we're playing cards and I trump you, I need a, a more powerful <laughs> card. The Colorado Enabling Act has not been played on FLIPMA yet. And so, you know, let it, let it come here first. And uh, when, we, when we opened that road in Gunnison, um, I knew that the likelihood of us being arrested was small, but I emptied my pockets anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I was standing there without my wallet, and, with, and I was ready to get arrested because the, the next move, my next move, and I don't know whether they knew this or not, I don't think they knew who they were dealing with at the time. <laughs> I was going to go after the, using 24-7-7, I was going to go after the uh, Forest Service's lack of jurisdiction. That was going to be the crux of my defense. And I don't think, I think that they are so afraid of that exposure, because it just takes one of us to get into a position to raise that issue to expose the entire system. Well, Utah, That's how vulnerable yeah, Utah's winning with 24 so what is, have you ever bounced uh, the Enabling Act idea off of guys like Ken Iyer? Yes, absolutely. We've talked about that at length. Yes, Ken, Ken uh, mentioned to me, he was amazed that every time someone has successfully challenged the Forest Service or the BLM using 2477, they've backed off. So there's a, there's a track record. And you know, we can thank Dick Harper of Knight County, Nevada for what he did back in 1993. He set this thing in motion. So, okay. We just need to keep the ball rolling. He, he gave everything he had to this fight, and it didn't get resolved. So it's, 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 a, it's, it's a dangling. I'm sorry, who was that? Dick Carver, Knight County, Nevada. He was a county commissioner, and he's the one that took the bulldozer up there to open that road. And um, matter of fact, that's what this was. Can you explain the 2477 real quick again? 2477 is a federal statute that was that came in through the Mining Act of 1872 or 1876. I'm not sure which one. But either way, it's it's it, it revised statute 2477. And it was under the Mining Act. And what it did was it protected roads and it footpath in Colorado, footpaths, um, mule paths, um, any kind of path or trail. Is it Colorado a statute or is it? No, it's a federal statute. It came in with the Federal Mining Act. And it, it recognized, just like they used to recognize mining claims, it recognized new roads, and it, it protected the right of way the moment it was created. So whenever somebody was moving west, and, and uh, by foot or you know, mule train or whatever, the, the right of way that they were moving across was suddenly protected and it was an established right of way and it had the protection of law. It was considered, you can't touch it. And in, in 1976, when the Federal Land Policy Management Act, FLIPMA, came in, the, that particular act recognized 2477 and its effects and it uh, validated them and it, it said that we're not going to erase 
the, the power of that law and the protection that it affords to those roads. So 2477 has been repealed by FLIPMA, but its effects are still out. It still protects those roads. So, uh, and, and it's FLIPMA that established that. They're still protected even though we're repealing the statute. All of the roads that were created up until 1976 have a protected status. Does that help? Anything else? You, you got that? Really important because it's critical to, to, because this is a really different argument than understanding the federal, the lack of federal jurisdiction on BLM and forests. So that, that uh, protected status of the roads is an entirely different argument than federal, the lack of federal jurisdiction in the state. So we can distinguish those two. So one, one quick note, then I'll let you keep going. But, okay. uh, the key here is FLIPMA recognizes RS-2477, but when you look at our Grand Junction RMP or any RMP, early on in those reports, they take 2477 out and they say, we're not gonna listen to that now, sue us later, is basically what it says in the Grand Junction RMP. So here we're, we're dealing people with people that rely on FLIPMA, but at the same time, they'll pull out 2477 and get it out of the way while they're closing 2,100 miles of routes in our community. It's, sub, it's an act of subterfuge. Yeah. Yeah. But that being said, now, Flipman was back that took, passed October 21st, 76. And in the same light, when you're reading these RMPs, they acknowledge the grazing act, the mining rights, um, and different right-of-ways that were established prior to 76. But if it's an RS-2477 claim, no way. Sue us later, we don't want to hear about it. And there's one page in the Grand Junction RMP that specifically talks about RS-2477, and it basically says, hey, we acknowledge everything but that. Okay, so, and, and here's the why. I, I, I'm going back to this, I'm going back to these just for a moment, and I'm, I'm gonna wrap it up here. This is, I'm coming to an end here, just to let you know. Uh, again, uh, back to federal jurisdiction within the state. Um, number four, we didn't cover this, and I'm going to enlarge that. Uh, four, four is here, proprietary interest only. This is huge. The term is applied to those instances, instances where the federal government has acquired some right or title to an area in a state, but has not obtained any measure of the state's authority over the area. Proprietary interest only. Now, proprietor is a steward. The United States may hold or acquire property within the borders of a state without acquiring jurisdiction. A proprietary interest comes without any jurisdiction. A proprietary interest is no different than you own your house and you have the authority to manage your property and to whatever degree that you have that interest as a proprietor, that's the status that the federal government owns over BLM and Forest Service land, and I'm about to show you that. It does not acquire, fed, it does not acquire legislative jurisdiction by virtue of its proprietorship. The acquisition of jurisdiction is dependent on the consent or recession of jurisdiction by the states, and I just showed you how that's done. The state of Colorado has to cede jurisdiction. If the state of Colorado does not see jurisdiction, and if it's not in these 15 pages, it does not exist. And to whatever degree the federal government is pretending to have jurisdiction is the degree that you can call them on and have a field day. And you can stand up right up to their Tim and Square tank and all of their SWAT gear and courageously stand there and say, you don't have jurisdiction here. Actually, uh oh. Tech man, get up there. Technical. Testing <laughs> <laughs> one, two, four. <laughs> Testing one, two. How do I do that? Did I lose battery? I, I have a red light here. Push the. Yeah, light battery should be on. Push the. This says low battery. Out. Did you pull the. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Testing one, two, three, four. We can all hear you. We can hear you. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm, I'll be wrapping up real quick here then. All right. So. The United States may obtain a juris jurisdiction by reserving it when sovereign title is transferred to the state upon its entry into the Union or by cession of jurisdiction after the uh, United States has otherwise acquired the property. Again, 
The, the state of Colorado is the means by which the United States acquired 